everybody, it's Miss Marie, and it's time for pajama story time. As you can see, the weather's getting warmer, so I don't have the, the heat coming out anymore, just the light from my fireplace, and I have my short sleeves on, getting ready for a cozy night in, and um, this will be our last pajama story time until colder weather comes back in the fall. So the first thing I thought we would do is do a little meditation on the waves in the water. Um, since it's getting to be so nice outside, a lot of us are probably going out um, walking in the woods, going to lakes, oceans, visiting. So I thought this was a nice way to relax tonight and think about waves on the water. You can close your eyes if you'd like and I'll read the meditation to you and you can breathe along with me. Here we go. Imagine you are standing in front of a lake. The water is flat and calm like glass. You have a stone in your hand and you throw it in the water. And what happens when you do that? You know. It lands and it makes little waves in the water. In your mind, watch the little waves as they go farther and farther out, getting smaller and smaller. Watch the lake in your mind until it gets totally calm and flat again. Take a long breath in and let it all the way out. Did you see the little waves in the water? Sometimes when the, it seems like the rings get bigger, but the waves get smaller and smaller. I thought that was a nice one that comes from our book, Breathe Like a Bear, and there's the illustration that goes along with it. Waves on the water. I like that one. I thought that was perfect for summertime. Speaking of summertime, are we ready to hear some great stories? Pajama stories? Today I'm going to read to you Nuffle Bunny 2. And it's a case of mistaken identity by Mo Willems. He's the writer and the illustrator of this book. And most of you probably know the Nuffle Bunny book, which is about Trixie when Trixie is little and has Nuffle Bunny lost at the laundromat. Now Trixie's a bit older. And is it possible that there are two Nuffle Bunnies out there? And here we see pictures of Trixie through life with mom and dad and Nuffle Bunny. And now, with a friend, as they get older and go to school and everything, right? Let's see, let me move so you can see. One morning, not so long ago, Trixie took a walk with her daddy. By now, Trixie really knew how to talk. So no more baby talk, no more blah, 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 blah. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to show Amy, and then I'm going to show Meg. Oh, Trixie's talking along. <laughs> And then I'll show Margo, and then I'll show Jane, and then I'll show Leela, and then I'll show Rebecca, and then I'll show Noah, and then I'll show Robbie, and then I'll show Tashi, and then I'll show Casey, and then I'll show Connie, and then I'll show Parker, and then I'll show Brian, and then, and talk and talk. <laughs> She's talking a lot. Trixie was excited because she was taking her one-of-a-kind Nuffle Bunny someplace very special. Come on. She's dragging Daddy out. <laughs> to school, where they are going to school. Oh, and there's all the kids going in. I think Trixie must be bringing Nuffle Bunny for show and tell. Trixie couldn't wait to show Nuffle Bunny to Miss Greengrove and all of her friends in pre-K. But just as her daddy kissed her goodbye, Trixie saw Sonia. Suddenly, Trixie's one-of-a-kind Nuffle Bunny wasn't so one-of-a-kind anymore. Look, Sonia's got a Nuffle Bunny, too. Oh, my goodness. Uh-oh, doesn't seem like she's there either, but then we're happy. That morning did not go well. Knuffle, knuffle, Trixie's saying. Nuffle, nuffle, says Sonia. So they're trying to tell you how to pronounce it, which I really don't know. Knuffle is what Trixie says, so I guess that's the right answer, but I always say nuffle. The afternoon was worse. Uh-oh. They're both trying to show off their, their Nuffle Bunnies and the teacher gets so annoyed she takes them both away. Uh-oh. When the school bell rang, Mrs. Ms. Greengrove returned to the Nuffle Bunnies. And the day got better. They're running around outside, playing with friends at the park. 
Then before she knew it, it was time to go home. Oh, okay. Trixie ate her dinner, which I don't think she really is eating her dinner. I think she's playing with her food. Devoured her dessert, which of course, if you, even if you didn't eat dinner, sometimes you want dessert. And brushed her teeth. Oh, she's getting ready for bed, right? Like you guys are. And tried to escape the mommy and daddy robots from planet Snurp. Oh, look, they're playing a little game chasing her up the stairs. <laughs> pretending to be robots, that's so silly. At half past bedtime, Trixie was tucked in, ready for sleep, almost. She's got her eyeball popped open. She's looking at her knuckle bunny. But a few hours later, she's up, she's yawning, she can't fall asleep. Trixie realized something. Did you see her eyes wide awake in the dark? Oh, what's going on? What did she realize? Trixie marched into her mommy and daddy's room and said, this is not my bunny. Her <gasps> mommy and daddy are barely like awake. Trixie's daddy tried to explain what 2.30 a.m. means. It means don't wake us up, it's 2.30 a.m. He asked, can we deal with this in the morning? Trixie's daddy went to the phone because obviously they can't deal with it in the morning. She's just gonna stand there and stare at them looking very distressed. So he goes to the phone. Before he even made it down the stairs, bring the phone rang. Who's calling them in the middle of the night? Uh, we have your bunny, said a man's voice on the other end. Uh oh, looks like another family is up in the middle of the night with a worried kid and a misplaced bunny. Uh, we have yours, replied Trixie's dad. Arrangements were made. It's so dark out. I just see shadows in the window. Trixie and her daddy rushed across the neighborhood. Oh, it's so dark with her little eyes, they're wide open. She's very scared and worried about her bunny. Trixie did not want to be late. Neither did Sonia. And this is actually a photograph in New York City of the neighborhood where they live. There was an exchange and the Nuffle Bunnies were back where they belonged. Oh, the daddies both look so tired and the kids look so worried. Look at Sonia hiding behind her daddy and Trixie hiding behind her daddy. And now the bunnies are exchanged and everybody looks happy again. I was so worried about my bunny, said Sonia. So was I, Trixie replied. Then they both said, I'm glad you got your bunny back at the exact same time. Oh my goodness, there they are telling each other how worried they were. And then there, there they are saying, thank goodness we got them back. And that is how Trixie found her first best friend. Aw. Nuffle Bunny expect, accepted, of course. Oh, that's the little asterisk here next to first because Nuffle Bunny was really her first best friend. But Sonya is her first person best friend. And that is the end. And there's a chalk drawing of the two Nuffle Bunnies sitting together on the sidewalk. Oh, but there's an epilogue that means more to the story after. The next morning, both Trixie and Sonia rushed back to school. The new best friends had a lot of catching up to do. Do you wanna play with my Nuffle Bunny? Sure, do you wanna play with mine? Look at the daddy. The daddies are tired. They didn't even shave in the morning because they're so tired from not getting any sleep. And that's the end. And now they're going to be best buddies. And they have their two Nuffle Bunnies. So that's why it's called Nuffle Bunny 2. T-O-O. -O. So it's kind of a like a number two. like, But that's spelled differently. That's T-W-O. And this is two like as in also. Her friend also has a Nuffle Bunny. <laughs> I thought that was a really, really fun one. Um, and I have one more short one today called The Sleep Train by Jonathan London. And it's illustrated by Lauren Eldridge. And everybody loves trains, so I thought you'd really enjoy this story. It has a really nice warm color for pictures. And it's published by Viking. Sleep train. Looks like somebody's getting ready for bed. The sun's going down here. Oh yeah, look at that sky. Look at that sky. Settling down for the night.
sleep train jiggling down that track. Ten sleepy cars going clickety clack with an engine in the front and caboose in the back. A beautiful picture. Sleep train chugging down that line. Ten sleepy cars and one of them is mine. So which one is he in? I don't know. There's a tender that makes one and a box car that makes two. There's a tank car, three, and a cattle car, two. So we have four cars so far, all different kinds. Each one has a name. Listen to the cows going moo moo. Listen to the whistle going choo choo. There's a hopper and a gondola and a gondola here. So that's up to six, I think. Yep, six cars. There's a flatbed that makes seven and a coach with seats. There's a dining car where everyone eats. Now, so far, that makes nine, nine sleepy cars rocking down that line. I see nice lights in there. It must be a passenger car. Sleep train jiggling down that track, but there are 10 sleepy cars going clickety-clack, followed by the caboose, a moonlit red. Can anybody see the caboose? Oh, I see it down there. And it is lit in the moonlight and it is red. Very nice. And I'm in the sleeping car, all cozy in bed. Is he really in the car though? Do you remember the beginning where he was? He's really in the city, right? But it's okay to pretend that you're on a train. It helps you sleep. The sleeping car that makes 10. I count the 10 sleepy cars. Ooh, again and again. I love how he's helping him fall asleep, thinking about those different types of cars in his head. I count 10 sleepy cars instead of counting sheep. And I'll count those cars until I go to sleep. Tender, one. Boxcar, two. Tank car, three. Cattle car, four. Hopper, five. Gondola, six. Flatbed car, seven. I like how they're floating in the clouds. <laughs> Coach, eight. Dining car, nine. And the sleeping car, 10. I count the 10 sleepy cars. Oh, yawn again and again. Maybe that's gonna help fall asleep, right? Like a lullaby, heard in a dream, soft as a pillow in a moonbeam. I wonder if that would help you fall asleep if you remember the cars. I count the sleepy cars slower and slower. I count those cars. I'm oh, getting tired now. Till my eyelids lower. Sleep train snoring down that track. Ten sleepy cars going clicky. And there's that moonlit caboose again at the end. And that is the end of Sleep Train. And I think that's a fun way to fall asleep. Where at my house is, there is a train close by, so I hear the train sometimes when I'm trying to fall asleep. But maybe I can try to remember the names of all the cars. I don't know. I'm not very good at remembering the names of the train cars. Um, but I could try. It would help me fall asleep. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to turn this down now so you can see the board. We're going to do... Starlight, star bright. You ready? Starlight, star bright. First star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might have this wish I wish tonight. And I wonder who's out there wishing and dreaming. Maybe Ryan is wishing to have a new train to play with. 
bank account for different cars when I fall asleep. She may be Juliana that's wishing for some more rainbow ice cream. Mm. <laughs> Maybe Evan and Andrew are wishing for another fishing trip <laughs> or a trip outside. And I know what I'm wishing for you. I'm wishing that you have a great summer. Good night's sleep tonight. A good night's sleep for the rest of this school year and the rest of this uh, springtime into summer. And I hope you will come and see me at the library. And um, I'll see you again soon for Pajama Storytime starting up again in the fall. Bye, everybody.